In this video, we will discuss the first step of aerobic respiration that is glycolysis. Glycolysis itself is an anaerobic process though it is the first step of aerobic respiration. As we discussed earlier, this is common step for aerobic as well as anaerobic respiration. The site where glycolysis takes place is cytoplasm. Secondly, it is anaerobic process. And it is also known as EMP pathway. This EMP is named after the three scientists who gave this pathway. Embin, Meyerhoff, and Parnas. These three scientists proposed and gave the complete pathway of the glycolysis and that is why EMP is the other name given to this pathway. Now let us see what exactly happens in glycolysis. In anaerobic respiration we just said that glucose is getting broken down into pyruvic acid. Here we will talk about all the 10 steps in which this reaction takes place. It starts with glucose molecule which is converted into glucose 6 phosphate that means the phosphate group is added here for this ATP is required this ATP provides energy as well as the phosphate and it changes into ADP when we define the respiratory process, we say we break down glucose to obtain energy. But in this step, we see energy being used up. So first half of glycolysis is actually the process in which energy is being invested. So this is known as energy investment phase, the first few reactions. The enzyme which is helping in this process is known as phosphorylase. It can also be termed as hexokinase. Glucose 6-phosphate is converted into its isomer that is fructose 6-phosphate. The enzyme which helps here is known as isomerase. As one hexose sugar is changing into another hexose sugar. Glucose to glucose 6-phosphate and then fructose 6-phosphate. Now fructose 6-phosphate is converted into a biphosphate again one more phosphorus is to be added so that will again come from ATP ATP will change into ADP so we have spent so far two ADPs and the molecule synthesized is fructose 1 6 biphosphate it is fructose which is a 6 carbon sugar and biphosphate means there are two phosphates. This fructose 1,6 biphosphate will break down into two 3 carbon compounds. Previous step phosphorylation is taking place again the enzyme is going to be phosphorylase. Now Fructose 1,6 biphosphate undergoes lysis. It splits in presence of an enzyme called aldolase into two, three carbon. See, fructose has six carbon. So two molecules which are going to be formed here, each will have three carbon. Plus, it has two phosphates also. So each one will get one phosphate. So the first molecule is dihydroxy acetone phosphate this is a three carbon compound with one phosphate and the other three carbon compound is glyceraldehyde three phosphate 
it is an aldehyde this is also a three carbon compound in this upper part of glycolysis we have so far spent or used two ATPs first time to convert glucose to glucose 6-phosphate and second time to convert fructose 6-phosphate into fructose 1,6-5-phosphate the further reaction is continued from glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate these two three carbon compounds they are isomers of each other that means they are interconvertible so next step only glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate participates but dihydroxyacetone can also get converted into glyceraldehyde so now onwards one reaction or one process will be glyceraldehyde undergoing changes and then dihydroxyacetone converting into glyceraldehyde and then undergoing change so let us see what happens after glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate it is an aldehyde it undergoes oxidation and it changes into an acid phosphoglyceraldehyde will change into phosphoglycerate at the same time if something is getting oxidized something else has to get reduced it is a redox reaction so what is that thing which will get reduced is NAD that is nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide it gets reduced into NADH plus H plus we can also write this as NADH2 and an inorganic phosphate gets added here this inorganic phosphate comes from phosphoric acid and it is written as PI for inorganic phosphate so glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate which is a 3 carbon compound with one phosphate group changes into another 3 carbon compound but here there is one more phosphorus but it is not coming from ATP it is coming from an inorganic source and aldehyde will change into acid so we will get 1,3 by phosphoglycerate glycerate or glyceric acid so aldehyde is changing into glycerate or acid this NADH which we have obtained here this is worth 3 ATPs it is going to give us 3 ATPs later on later on in the last step that is oxidative phosphorylation now this 1,3 by phosphoglycerate it can also be written as diphosphoglycerate so we are continuing with this this by phosphoglycerate loses one phosphate and that one phosphate is taken by ADP and now we get ATP synthesis so now we have come into the payoff reactions up till now it was investment phase now we are going to get the ATP <coughs> so now biphosphoglycerate has changed into 3 <coughs> 3 phosphoglycerate this 3 phosphoglycerate now changes into 2 phosphoglycerate what is changing here is only position of the phosphate group in this molecule it is at the third carbon third carbon now it will be on the second carbon so this will be set 2 phosphoglycerate the enzyme which helps is called phosphoglycerate glycerate mutase it is just shifting the phosphate group from third carbon to second carbon now this phosphoglycerate which is 2 phosphoglycerate changes into phosphoenol pyruvate the enzyme which helps here <coughs> is known as enolase phosphoenol pyruvate will finally change into pyruvic 
acid. <clears throat> Phosphoenol pyruvate still has a phosphate and pyruvic acid is without any phosphate. That means this phosphate will be lost. It will be taken by ADP and we will get ATP. So in the investment phase, we spent one ATP here, second ATP here. This is payoff. In payoff, we got one ATP in this step and the second ATP here. We need to remember that this is only half of the reaction which is taken place. Why we are saying half? Because it is only glycerol dehyde phosphate which participated. What about this dihydroxy acetone? It will get converted into the same glycerol dehyde 3 phosphate and the same reaction will continue. So at the end, we will get two molecules of pyruvic acid. So if we have to just sum up what is happening in this process, we are getting two pyruvic acids. One starting with glycerol dehyde, one pyruvate. Dihydroxy acetone converting into glycerol dehyde will give us second pyruvate. Let us count ATPs. From one glycerol dehyde, how many ATPs did we get? One is here, the second is here. In the second, we will get four ATPs together. That means two from one molecule and two more from the other molecule. But we have spent two here. So we need to give those two ATPs back. So our net gain is going to be two ATPs. Now, one more thing. We are also getting one molecule of this NADH. This is worth three ATPs. How many NADH are we going to get? One in this reaction. Second, when dihydroxy acetone participates as glycerol dehyde, one more. So we will get two NADH2, which are going to be worth six ATPs. So in all, we will get two ATPs as ATP currency and NADH2, it is like a check. Suppose if we say that we are going to get eight rupees, two are in the form of currency, which you can immediately spend and six are in the form of a check, which you cannot spend. You have to encash it. And this encashment or conversion of NADH2 into ATP is or will be done in the last step of aerobic respiration that is oxidative phosphorylation. And that is why when we talk of net gain, net gain is only 2 ATPs. Net is what you can immediately spend but gross would be this 2 plus 6. So gross is going to be 8 ATPs. So we need to remember 2 ATPs as net gain and 8 ATPs as gross. We get 6 ATPs in the form of NADH which we will encash later on in the last step. Now in anaerobic respiration also the same process took place but we said we get only two ATPs in anaerobic respiration, though the first step remains to be the same. The reason is there is a slightly different reaction which is taking place. Let us quickly go over that reaction. And I'm going to keep this as it is so that we are able to compare it with anaerobic glycolysis. What happens in anaerobic respiration? Glucose is broken down into two molecules of pyruvic acid, this is glycolysis. In this, we said we are getting NADH also. So NAD getting converted into NADH2. This pyruvic acid then changes into acetaldehyde. Two molecules, acetaldehyde changes into ethanol. And in this conversion of acetaldehyde to ethanol, this NADH2 gets converted into NAD. That means the check which you got here is not going to remain to be encashed later on. So this NADH2 has been used up. What remains is only the ATP. So in anaerobic respiration also glycolysis takes place, but we get only two ATPs. In aerobic respiration, 2 as net gain and 
total gross will be 8 ATPs. These numbers we need to remember very, very carefully. Now, after this, pyruvic acid, two molecules, will enter the next step, that is Krebs cycle. So, in next video, we will discuss the Krebs cycle starting with a molecule of pyruvic acid.